Common mistakes made in food photography. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy and on this channel we talk about everything to do with food photography. So if this interests you then click subscribe down below. In this video I'm going to go through some of the most common mistakes that I see beginner food photographers and even some more advanced food photographers make. I still catch myself making some of these mistakes too. I will also run through a few easy fixes for them to help improve your food photography. Before I go into this video, I just want to say that art is subjective and these mistakes sometimes aren't mistakes. Sometimes they're done intentionally and they still make great images. It's completely up to you. However, if you've been wondering how you could improve your food photography, follow along with this video and these tips and see if you are making some of these mistakes that are quite common in food photography. Following a few of these tips might really improve your food photography. That is enough blabbing. I'm gonna get straight into the video now and go through the tips that you're actually here for. The first one is making your images too busy or too distracting. A lot of people when starting out see these really nice fancy images and they see how nice and busy they are and they try to just do too much at once. This can mean either having too many props in an image or just have too much going on. What this does is it distracts from the hero of the image and it can take a lot of the attention away from the thing you're actually trying to photograph. There's nothing wrong with busy images, but especially as a beginner, it's really easy to cross that line of being busy and distracting. The best way to fix this is to start simple. So when I'm setting up a scene, or even in my head, I start to add things gradually into an image. So you can have your hero ready, and if you start adding things in, and you notice adding one certain thing in, starts to take the attention away from the thing you're photographing, Take it back out. And there's nothing wrong with being quite minimal, especially to begin with, and you'll start to really learn how to showcase the food that you're photographing. After doing this a few times, so kind of gradually adding things into a scene, you'll get a much better idea of exactly where that line between busy and distracting is and it will make it a lot easier for you to fall into just that generally busy or nice, simple shots. Make sure your hero is the hero. That is one of the biggest mistakes I see in food photography. Another thing to stop it being too distracting is make sure anything in the shot, so any prop or any food or any garnish, makes sense in that image. If you've got a big bowl of tomato soup, having a fork next to it is gonna be way more distracting than having a spoon because it just doesn't make sense. The next few mistakes I'm going to mention are all based around lighting. Lighting is a really, really important aspect in food photography and it's the one thing which I would say definitely work on getting right before you try to do anything crazy because lighting is such a simple thing but it will make or break any image in any genre of photography. Because it's so important, it's also very easy to make quite a few different mistakes in the lighting area. So one thing I see a lot is people reducing the shadows way too much in food photography. This is going to make an image look really flat and a bit dull. Soft lighting is great for so many areas of food photography and I use it all the time. But one thing to remember when shooting with soft lighting is make sure it's not too soft that you are cancelling out all of the shadows in an image. The shadows are what give the photo depth, what make it look 3D. Without them, it's just going to look completely flat. If you think that this might be a problem that you're having with some of your images, ways to fix this could be to not overlight your scene. Don't throw too much light at one scene because obviously there's gonna be very few shadows in it and don't over soften light. If you're using a diffuser, try without the diffuser. If you're using a reflector, and you think that might be bouncing too much light into your scene, try pulling that reflector slightly further away. This is going to bounce a little less light back in and give a little bit more depth to those shadows. Fixes we can do in editing. So if you've taken an image and you think it's already on screen looking a bit too flat, try to darken the shadows a little bit. That'll bring a bit more depth back into them. If the image was looking quite 3D and had some depth before editing it, don't over lighten the shadows in Lightroom. 
So bring back down those shadows. Don't pull that shadow slider up too far. This is gonna bring back a bit of that oomph into our shadows and add that 3D feel again. Another way that could be making your images look a bit flat is if you're lighting your images from the front. This is obviously going to get rid of all of the shadows visible because all of the light is going to fill all of the shadows and this is going to make it leave it looking really flat and really dull. Easy way to fix this is to light your image from the side or the back. So either have the light at a 90 degree angle to the camera or 180 degree angle to the camera. This is going to create either some shadows at the side or the front of your image. Obviously, if you're using backlighting, I would suggest having a little bit of a reflector to fill in some light, but you're still not going to fully fill it in and you're going to have some really nice shadows and some depth going on in your image. So another lighting mistake I see is for an image to be too warm, too cold or having a mix of temperatures. This can either make an image look too warm or too cold or kind of a bit wishy-washy as well if you've got sort of white light and orange light lighting the same subject. How we fix this is to turn room lights off so your room lights will have like a warm tone to them so if your camera is either set for white balance for your room light it will make daylight or flash look blue or if your camera is set for the white light so the daylight or the flash it's going to make that room light come off a bit warm. This isn't really an issue you have if you're shooting with flash because the flash tends to overpower the room light. But if you're shooting with either natural or continuous light, definitely have your room lights off. Another way you could do this is to set your custom white balance. So the way we do this is with a grey or white card and your settings on your camera. So these will be different on every camera. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you might want to see in a video, how to set custom white balance. The next mistake I see quite a lot with beginners is to not shoot with the correct aperture for your subject. This could either be an aperture too wide or an aperture too narrow. Something that's really tempting to do when you're shooting food is to shoot with your aperture wide open. One, it gives you more light and two, it gives you that really nice dreamy feel. Although that is a really great way to make your subjects pop and stand out in an image, small F number so a wide aperture can easily become too small of an area in focus. If that plane of focus becomes too small, you're not gonna have much of your subject in focus. And like I said at the beginning, it's really important that we're showing the hero of an image. So if you've not got it all in focus, you're not really doing a very good job at actually showing your subject. On the other hand, if you're shooting an image that's either 45 or 90 degree angle and you've got too large of an F number, you're going to have too much of your image in focus and what's going on around it or behind it can get really distracting. Ways of fixing this. Figuring out your camera, using the different settings, seeing exactly what works best for your scene. Here I've got two burgers, both pretty similar in images but this one on the left is shot at F8 and the one on the right is shot at F4. And as you can see here, the one on the left, we can see the whole of the hero burger. Yet the burger in the background and the sauce at the front have still been thrown out of focus. The burger to the right has only got a very small area of the burger in focus and F4 isn't even that wide but it's quite a large subject. So the bigger the subject the more you're going to need to try and get in focus to really show what you're photographing. You need to try and get that happy medium of an aperture so it's small enough to give you that nice dreamy feel but it's large enough to have your image in focus. Try to remember not to focus on the front of a subject, go slightly behind which is going to get more of the actual subject in focus because it'll get a bit in front of where you focus and a bit behind of where you focused, if that makes sense. For example with this burger, instead of focusing right on the front of the burger, I focused just slightly behind the front about here to get more of that whole burger in focus. If something is more in focus than you want, you could also increase the distance between your subject and the object that's distracting. So say there was something here, you could increase the distance with still keeping your subject in focus, yet throwing this more out of focus. This is a really good way to keep that aperture at a good level without having too much of a distracting background. 
For example, with this image, I've got the aperture at f8 to get the whole of the glass in focus, but I didn't want the back glass to be too distracting, so I pulled that further away from the front glass to make sure it's nice and blurry. My last mistake to mention, and maybe the most important one, so the biggest mistake I see in food photography, is to not keep trying. Don't be too worried to make the mistakes that you don't push yourself and you don't try new things because that's how you're going to improve. You're not going to improve if you get one area of photography and you just keep trying to do the same thing. The biggest way you're going to improve is to push yourself and try new things. So definitely keep making mistakes. That's all for today's video guys. I hope you found that one helpful and let me know if there's anything you'd like to know about food photography and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.